Hello, and thank you for watching another edition of Telco Steve's Workbench. Today we have for you a Western Electric H-Series phone. There's some traffic in the background, sorry for the audio about this, but I decided to take it outside today for a different venue. And the same old backdrop gets kind of boring after a while. Not that the videos aren't boring to begin with, but maybe a little bit of interest will draw a couple more viewers. In any event, this phone is an H-Series phone that was developed and designed, well designed by Henry Dreyfus and developed by Western Electric. Western Electric made the telephones for the Bell system at the time when this phone came out in 1936. This phone has been totally refurbished and uh, made to function at, well, as you can see, the phone does ring on an incoming call. Hello? Yeah, hi. No, the 302 was, was also known by a 304. Yeah, subset. Yeah. Uh, well, the 304 uh, was a subscriber lines with automatic toll ticketing for tip and ring identification, and the 305 was used for a ringer cutoff switch, and the 306 had a four-party selective or eight-party selective uh, use, and the 307 was a local battery set used on a magneto so that um, when you ordered these phones, it wasn't necessarily a 302. Yeah, it was the H-Series. And that H series has a designation of H1, H2, and H3. Hello? Hello? Well, that's the first time somebody's ever hung up on me during my explanation. Can't win them all. Anyway, this phone uh, has uh, all the dates on it are exactly the same. And it's marked S9. Dash 19 dash 46. It's marked that date on the network, as you can see from the picture, on the ringer coils, the the, the coils to the bell. <laughs> we got a train going in the background. This is great. It's marked S 91946 on the cover. The t it's plastic tinite tinin cover, and it's stamped that date. And it's stamped that date on the base of the phone as well. All the dates match. I also want to take this opportunity to thank Tony from uh, Tony D from what is known as the Motherlode area of California, Gold Rush area. I don't know. Anyway, he's somewhere up in California, and he indicated to me after asking him for his uh, excellent help. He's quite knowledgeable on his telephones. <laughs> very knowledgeable and he told me that the S stands for a marking that was used by Western Electric where they used the phone to test maybe like it was they took it aside and used it for testing of some sort quality assurance or some sort of thing like that so to have the S mark on it and have the S mark on every component is extremely rare and when I say it's rare, it's rare. And to have all the dates marked on your phone the same is very hard to come by. But with that, it does have some blemishes on it. Right here in the back, next to the cradle, there's a kind of a blemish right here. Looks like somebody might have at one time kind of banged him or something. It's not terrible, it's not bad. It doesn't take away from the appearance of the phone, I think, personally. Uh, and the dial, is a rotary dial and it is uh, had the I used a laminate over the numbers because the numbers on these uh, dial faceplate were so faded that I felt that it was best to do that I did cut out the area that says 46 on it as well all the dates where they can possibly be a date on this phone are the same so this phone originally came out in 1936 with a zinc metal alloy base. The zinc metal alloy base was in production on these phones until roughly 1941-42 time frame. Then because of the war effort they cut back a little bit on it and they came out with the plastic 
cover, the plastic base, to replace that zinc metal base. The zinc metal base was refurbished because Western Electric did a darn good job in rejuvenating their equipment and putting it back out in the field. And in some cases, the metal bases, the dates can be found all the way up to 1946. And I've heard 1947. And so if you have one that's 1946, maybe you've got a rare one too. But uh, for the most part, most of them were plastic. With the fact this phone replaced in service this type of model that came out in 1930 and was in production in 1930 well into 1936 37 and some say possibly 38 this is the commonly referred to as the 202 oval base it's an oval base phone that has a d1 marking on the back of the base of of the phone it did not have the network inside the ringer the network the condenser that was all in a subset hanging on the wall and in some cases the ladies at the time of the household didn't want a subset uh, mounted on the wall so the phone the 302 the H series phone it could be an H1 H2 H3 by the way the H1 302 was used in for single line subscriber and multi line subscribers and well multi subscriber line and it had all the network components installed in it the phone has been replaced with cloth cords there's a four foot handset cord on it it has a six foot cloth line cord on it and as you can see from the photograph that has been adapted with a modular jack on the end a modular plug I should say that fits a modular cord so when you take it out of the box and you plug it into your jack and if your jack is 20 feet down away from the phone where you want it to sit you get a 20 foot line modular cord and you simply plug it in this is because if you're gonna have a telephone and as much as they're lovely to look at and lovely to hold and if you should fall on the floor consider it sold that's great you want to put it on your bookshelf and have it fall off an earthquake whatever that's fine just kidding if you want to put it on your bookshelf and have it look at it and collect phones believe me I've done that that's great it'll be a great addition to your collection with all the same dates in it let's face it but if you would like to have the phone and want it to work you simply plug it into the wall wherever your jack is. This gives you the wonderful capability of using this phone. However, you must have pulse rotary dial telephone service from your telephone service provider in order for this phone to function. Some VoIP systems, you decide some of them, if not all of them, do not support rotary pulse signaling. In other words, they don't support a rotary dial telephone. What they do support is a DTMF phone or touch tone. DTMF is dual tone multi-frequency. That's the type of signaling that's used on touch tone phones. The rotary is a pulse signaling due to the pulsing of the contacts on the dial that indicate which number you're dialing back to the central office. So this truly is a 302. There are other models that came out and looked like this that Western Electric did manufacture, the 250 series, 251 being one of them, and with different markings on them which indicated a marking for it had a dial or no, it didn't have a dial, a 251AW, a 251 whatever, and uh, sorry Tony, but I did mention the 251 this time, okay, so don't get after me. So, but but uh, the 251 was used by independent telephone companies. It usually came without a ringer, so that the independent telephone company could provide the ringer inside the phone that met up with the frequency of the ringing from the central office. If it was 16 hertz, they put a 16 hertz ringer in it. If it was a 22 hertz signaling for, for ringing, they put a 22 hertz ringer in it. That's what the 251 usually provided. They came with an F1W handset. This guy comes with an F1 handset. And it has dial tone. I'm, ho I'm hoping you can hear that.
man, I better stop before I call uh, Pizza Man he delivers. I didn't say that. So, there, even though the 250 series looks like the 300 series, H series phones, uh, it's a different type. So, most people refer them as a 302. 302 is actually, if you want to get technical about it. Well, that's all we have for you today. And yeah, thank goodness. Hopefully the wind didn't affect the microphone and hopefully the train uh, horn wasn't too bad, the traffic in the background, etc. But uh, I do want to thank you for watching Toko Steve's Workbench. Remember, take care of those you love, hold them tight, tell them that you love them. It's important, that's why. Have a great day and thank you for watching Toko Steve's Workbench.